Good afternoon and welcome back to the second appointment with five pins for dummies in cooperation with the Italian Federation, FIBIS, the CIB and also the UMB. Our aim is to give the, to the foreign players the possibility to learn, develop and improve the knowledge of the five pins game. Today I have here with me and also, I mean, by my side, so here, Maxime Jublot from France. Maxime, and now we can see uh, more or less uh, all his uh, results in the last years. So he's uh, multiple, multiple French champion. Uh, he also did some very nice participation into the European and World Championship. He defeated a lot of players, such as uh, in the last uh, tournament in Pistoia, in the World Championship, Daniel Lopez with 4-1, a very nice match. Uh, we were able to see the last part of the match, uh, uh, but not the, the last shots during the, uh, the, the first uh, appointment that we had with four, five pins for dummies. And uh, welcome to Maxime Jublot. I leave you uh, into your presentation in your language. Today we will do it in English with me and in French with, uh, with you. Uh, and uh, this is the guy. Oui, bonjour Lucas. Eh ben, merci beaucoup pour, pour cette présentation et puis euh, merci aussi à, à la Fédération Italienne pour euh, cette superbe initiative. Je pense qu'on a une, une belle chance de promouvoir euh, le Sanky, d'expliquer un peu euh, euh, le jeu, d'aller euh, en profondeur dans la technique euh, avec toi, avec un instructeur comme toi. Donc, euh, voilà. Merci, merci et merci à toi. Thank you. And now we can start. Uh, we can start with the with the game. We will see the semi-final, the first one between Ciro Davide Rizzo, the, which is the player that we see in uh, actually, and uh, Paolo Marcolin. Ciro Davide Rizzo. Uh, it's uh, the runner-up. Uh, in that case, uh, he started with the the. the the yellow ball and uh, Paolo is with the white one. Uh, we will try also to stop uh, some uh, particular moments uh, during the game and try to analyze some shots. Uh, and so feel free uh, to do some questions in the uh, in the chat that you can see into uh, Phoebe's into billiard channel. Now yes, we start and. Uh, yeah, Maxime, uh, if you want to talk about maybe some what you know about these two players, I know that you, uh, I think you saw that game in Pistoia quite close uh, with me. Uh, we were quite in the same place uh, in the crowd, yes. just like uh, it was very, very crowded, as you can see. And uh, just feel free to translate and to talk about your sensation on what uh, you were. Uh, thinking and feeling during the World Championship. Oui, donc le, le match qu'on va commenter cet après-midi est entre uh, Ciro David Rizzo et, et Paolo Marcolin. C'était une demi-finale du dernier championnat du monde à Pistoia. Uh, donc Luca et moi étions à Pistoia à ce moment-là, dans les tribunes évidemment, pas sur le billard malheureusement. Uh, donc uh, bah, on va essayer de... Euh, de trouver quelques points pour, euh, pour faire des discussions. Et puis, euh, si vous avez des, des questions ou des demandes, euh, n'hésitez surtout pas à les mettre euh, dans le chat, et que ce soit euh, live euh, ou, même, euh, ou même après que vous reverrez cette vidéo, on essaiera d'y aller le mieux possible. Donc, je vais vous dire une question position, uh, Luca. Oui. Yeah. So, uh, there, in that case, I think that uh, Davide could see the ball, the, uh, the ball of, yeah. of Marco, but he decided to go for uh, uh, shots using the cushion and yeah. not shoot directly to the ball. Yes. Uh, the question is uh, if Mirko can do uh, the replay of the shot uh, that, uh, that Davide Rizzo uh, was doing before the shot of Paolo. I will try to explain why uh, that kind of choice. Um, we have to start thinking about the fact that we are in a 
very high level. So uh, even if you play within rails, uh, within cushions, sometimes it's easier to manage some kind of shots. Uh, th this is the case. So uh, if you go and you play straight, uh, the risk is that you are not. You know, first of all, he's coming from the cushion, so he has no possibility to play uh, with uh, a, a nice bridge, as you can see. So it's close to the. It's just linked to the rail, the ball. So if he starts from that position and he takes uh, the other ball, uh, not so thin, maybe bigger, he can go and find out also the red ball and and play for four. And uh, mm -hmm. in uh, he can also play and 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 find some pins. Uh, these lines are quite easy to play uh, mm -hmm. because there are some good referrals. Uh, we are thinking about we are speaking about uh, one no, two of the most uh, uh, talented players that we had in the last four. So uh, even if they are very very good in on front shots, they have a very very good knowledge into uh, cash on shots. So the tolerance uh, within that shot it's easier and. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's easy maybe for them to start uh, uh, keeping confidence with the match by playing that shot on the rail. Uh, the risk, on the other hand, if you play straight, is to get the red ball with, with the other one and to play uh, and, to, and to let then uh, uh, the other player uh, play a, an easier shot. So you can explain it in, uh, um, in French if you want. That, that's my explanation. Oui, ouais, on a vu que le, le premier coup qu'a joué euh, David Erizzo, euh, bien qu'il voyait la bille euh, de l'adversaire, il a choisi de le jouer euh, en bande avant. Euh, euh, on était euh, dans un cas un peu particulier où, euh, euh, en arrivant euh, sur, sur la bille de l'adversaire, il pouvait éventuellement espérer aller toucher la bille rouge ou aussi aller faire, euh, aller faire des quilles. Euh, donc c'est pour ça qu'il a choisi de, de jouer en bande avant plutôt que de jouer le coup euh, direct pour, euh, pour trouver une défense. Donc, euh, interesting shot for, from, from Rizzo. Yeah, and, and also that kind of shot. Uh, you mean the, also the, the last one, no, uh, Maxime? The direct shot? Uh, yeah, also that, that is, with the uh, attack. He scores 14 points, I think. It was just uh, maybe uh, 30 seconds before this yeah. one. Yeah, no, it's the uh, it's before that one he was playing the the di directly on the pins. Uh, it was more or less, uh, I think, uh, one and a, one and a half, one one minute before. Uh, so if uh, Mirko is able to, to to do the replay of the shot, we will try to um, to explain. The reason, so Mirko, riesce a darmi il, il tiro precedente di, di, C, di Dirizzo per cortesia? Quello il fisso che ha tirato dove ha fatto 14. Arriva. Grazie. Thank you. We were just asking the replay of the, the shot we were speaking about with Maxim. It was a direct shot on the pins, uh, maybe risky. That's, that's exactly that one. Uh, it was just a shot to do a lot of pins. I don't mm -hmm. think he was figuring out uh, uh, the risk and uh, he took it. Uh, It was not easy to go into the piece, so uh, only if he was ke keeping the, the red one thinner than, than, than this, he would uh, lose points. But uh, he, just wanted, he just wanted to give pressure on, uh, mm -hmm. on Paolo, starting from uh, uh, the, the first set. Don't remember, just remember that uh, uh, Chiro was playing and doing a lot of pins since the start of this World Championship. So he was absolutely on fire. And uh, he was coming also from uh, a, very, a very big tournament, the Italian tournament, the BTP won. And so uh, he was confident in, uh, in his game. Uh, and it was quite easy to see that uh, when he was playing. So this is my explanation. Put pressure. Doesn't care a lot about uh, 
where the, the other ball was going. It, 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 could have, it could have been losing points, but it was not so easy to get so thin this, uh, this red ball. It's a way of playing, so it's fair, in my opinion. And uh, that's my explanation. Ah, oui. Donc on a vu, euh, on a vu un instant là un coup euh, assez risqué de, de David Rizzo qui choisit euh, d'envoyer la bille de, euh, de Marco Lin directement dans l'équipe en jouant très fort et du coup avec un peu moins de possibilité de, de maîtriser l'impact sur la bille rouge et on voit qu'il passe euh, très proche du château euh, avec sa bille donc très proche de donner des points euh, mais bon ça fait partie du, du style du joueur finalement. Euh, qui est un joueur vraiment très offensif et qui en plus à ce moment-là était euh, dans, une, euh, dans une bonne période de confiance puisqu'il venait de gagner un, un tournoi important en Italie et on l'avait vu pendant euh, tout le début du mondial être très offensif et, et très en confiance donc euh, c'est euh, euh, vraiment représentatif du, de la forme du joueur à ce moment-là qui se permet de, de prendre ce genre de risque qui aurait pu lui coûter cher mais qui permet de mettre euh, une grosse pression à, à Paolo Marcolini So big pressure on the points with uh, with this execution from uh, from Rizzo. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I know also because they know each other since a long time, so they know exactly the pros and the cons about the the, the way they play. Uh, they are well, very, very good in playing front front uh, shots, uh, and so they are were trying to put pressure. But we will see. I think also in. And the other part of the match, during all the match, what will happen uh, between uh, this kind of uh, uh, the, the way of uh, putting pressure to, to, to the other player. For example, in that case, Paolo is not, is not able to, uh, to come back within the pins, but it, it took this kind of defense, which was uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. Ouais, un très joli coup de défense. Là, on voit que Marcolin n'avait pas la possibilité de, de faire des points, donc il choisit de, de faire euh, une défense derrière la rouge. Très difficile et un coup, euh, un coup magnifique. Qui d'ailleurs euh, lui donne une, une occasion de faire des points derrière. So this defense gives him then the, the occasion to try to score points right after that. So it's. Uh, yeah, it, it yeah. was a good choice. It was, it was building up. Uh, the next shot uh, within uh, the, the, the red one in the shot before. Yeah. Here we can see that they are starting, and so it's say, world, a world championship semi final, so they try to get confident within, uh, uh, within the game. So even this one is a shot that maybe uh, we will see not. Uh, In, in, in the other in the other sets so they are still uh, they have still to warm up also that one uh, it's maybe with the too much speed they are trying to get confidence with the with the match the way of playing and uh, we will see improving them uh, set by set ouais, là, on voit les, les premiers coups des joueurs qui sont euh... Euh, un tout petit peu approximatif avec euh, soit des, une erreur sur la, la force comme le coup précédent de, de Rizzo euh, ou euh, une erreur sur la prise de vie sur le, sur le coup de Paolo euh, donc là on est vraiment dans la phase de, de warm-up euh, de la partie euh, les joueurs ne sont, euh, sont pas encore complètement entrés dans le match il ne faut pas oublier qu'il y a beaucoup de tension pour cette euh, demi-finale Or another occasion here, maybe for yeah. for Paolo to to score points, but uh, once again a difficult position on the rail. So yeah, I yeah. I don't know if it's uh, if it's preferable here to to shoot hard or maybe to to try to to go only for uh, yeah um, one. Uh, I one, think one that. We can consider the mismatch, uh, and it's a very big mismatch. Uh, but I think that the right choice at this level is to play absolutely uh, in that way, so fast. The question is that mm -hmm. we just went into the crossing of the two rails, and it's uh, uh, 
uh, I think uh, he paid a lot of pins, maybe too much. In, if you look just like uh, at the uh, the mistake that he did, but uh, yeah. it was uh, the maximum mistake that uh, the, the, the maximum points that he could give, maybe. Yeah. This, uh, this mistake. Mm. And they paid also this one after because this is a the a, a wrong speed into that shot and a very big mistake. Mm. Well, On the uh, other hand, uh, we see that this is something which is quite close to perfection, or I think that perfection has this name into that shot because you have to play and the red ball, the, the, sorry, the yellow ball has to stay exactly in the center of the table, so you don't have to push. Uh, by reverse speed, you just need to uh, play on 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 uh, on the on the middle part of the ball, and uh, you have to to be very confident within that shot because the mistake is is quite easy to be done. Uh, if you play too slow, it's a problem, and if you give too much reverse speed, it's another problem because uh, this doesn't combine each other. As, as they should, and so uh, it's quite easy to to pay for an easy shot afterwards. The very quality shot by Shiro David Eriz. Yeah, we have a good man of David Eriz who has made a three band with taking just the white rouge and taking bien soin to guide his bille sur the middle of the billard, so sur la vraiment la, la médiane dans la longueur. Euh, c'est un coup qui n'a pas besoin d'être joué avec du rétro, hein, qui se joue euh, grosso modo bio, bio centre, euh, avec la force qui est très importante pour que la bille adverse fasse trois bandes, passe dans les quilles, puis euh, remonte un peu euh, après deux bandes derrière le château pour euh, obtenir la défense. Mais euh, superbe, superbe coup. Now Rizzo took a very large advantage on that in that in that set, and uh, Paolo needs to recover from a, a difficult position. In that, in that shot, in that shot, you should aim uh, this kiss because uh, in any case uh, you can get out from. Uh, uh, this uh, not easy position also if you kiss uh, uh, close to the close to the long rail okay so uh, you mean that uh, he wanted to have the kiss on the on the previous shot no the, um... it's just a part of the of the shot it may happen okay. so you just have to give a little much speed on the, on the shot because you can get out from a little kiss Within a little, uh, some more speed. Otherwise, it's it's always too slow the the shot. Okay. And then okay. afterwards, uh, Rizzo went for a seven sh seven ray shot because he wanted to go close to the to the red to the red and try to play within the red uh, the red ball afterwards. Mm. Sur le sur le coup précédent de Marcolin, on a vu que uh, qu'il était arrivé sur la sur la bille jaune en prenant la, la bosse. C'est le genre de coup qu'il faut jouer, euh, d'après les conseils de, de Luca, euh, avec euh, une force euh, un peu supérieure pour essayer d'éloigner les billes. On est souvent euh, trop court sur ce genre de coup. Donc là, c'était plutôt bien joué. Ensuite, on a Rizzo qui a, qui a essayé de jouer un, un set band euh, ben pour faire des points, hein, tout simplement. Quand on est à ce, à ce niveau-là du score, il, il a voulu se rapprocher au maximum de la fin du set, qui est en, qui est en 60 points. And once again here, Rizzo makes the choice to, to attack and the maximum score, score some points, maybe? Yeah, I think that he wanted to go very close to the to the red one. He could play also to close the game. But uh, I, it, it's uh, this is a big mistake because uh, uh, it, it can start with uh, a session of points for, for Paolo, Marcolin, and that's what's happening. So he wanted to take care about the red one. I think that he did a mistake. It was just to have a carom on the red and then to do some pins. And uh, he took the, the other ball too, uh, too small in too small part. 
and uh, he paid for 10 points. So the sequence can be absolutely uh, yeah, amazing within that. Mm. Ouais, donc on a, on a Rizzo qui a, a peut-être fait une, une erreur sur le coup précédent où euh, on ne sait pas exactement s'il voulait euh, aller faire le, le point sur la birouge et il laisse finalement une, une position d'attaque assez facile à, à Paolo Marcolin qui fait 12 points et euh, ce genre d'erreur de, peut se payer cher à ce niveau-là avec euh, une séquence de tirs derrière avec euh, des attaques et des défenses qui peuvent faire très mal. Donc là, on voit que Marcolin a fait 12 points, et là, il fait le choix de, de faire les bandes avant pour faire à la fois les points et s'assurer la défense. Et avec 8 points, euh, là, on est sur un coup qui met euh, beaucoup de pression à, à David Erizzo. So with this uh, uh, two questions, Uh, shot, uh, Marcolin puts uh, once again a lot of pressure on, on Rizzo because uh, he's now at uh, 46, so not so far, and uh, Rizzo yeah. has to play uh, some shot uh, using the rails, so he's not, he, he must think now, I think. Yes, uh, my consideration here is that uh, from a mistake on the, on the, the, the other shot of uh, Uh, Ciro Davide Rizzo, so not going close to the red one, because in that case uh, it, it would have been necessary for Paolo to get out from, uh, from this position. He paid uh, uh, quite 20 points. And now Paolo is uh, 46, and from 44, when you play at 60, is a different game because you can close in one shot. From 46, mm -hmm. 48, uh, you, you can consider to play different shots and maybe to gain within uh, the opponent, which is uh, at uh, one, one pin uh, to win the set in that case, or maybe maybe just two pins or the red one in, uh, if you are on 56 or 57. So the question is, uh, uh, never underestimate what can happen on a, on a mismatch be because the damages can be uh, very, very big. Mm -hmm. Oui, donc on a, on a vu là qu'avec cette... Uh... Cette petite ouverture laissée par euh, Rizzo qui aurait sans doute voulu rester euh, juste à côté de la rouge pour que tactiquement euh, Paolo euh, soit très embêté, euh, dans cette petite erreur finalement euh, lui coûte une, une remontée hein, puisque euh, Marcolin a fait euh, une vingtaine de points et se retrouve euh, au-dessus des, des 44 points. Ce qui fait qu'en euh, en un, en un coup, il peut se retrouver soit à finir le set euh, soit à remonter très très proche de, de Rizzo donc euh, euh, juste sur une erreur, juste sur un coup on peut se retrouver à payer une, payer une séquence et euh, à remettre en question le, le gain du set So in the end, Rizzo uh, uh, scored the, the three points here yeah. And, uh, yeah. and won the set but it was, uh, yeah. it was close So now we are one zero. Now we started with the second the second set. So it's Paolo, which is going on uh, two cash on. Yep, classic, the aim uh, of that shot, yeah. Mm -hmm. The aim yeah, of that cool. shot is to come and close to the, the link of the two rails, just like that. Voilà, donc dans, ce, dans ce coup euh, assez classique hein, d'ouverture, euh, le, le but pour euh, Marcolin était vraiment de passer euh, juste derrière la bille de, juste derrière la bille, euh, de Rizzo. Et, euh, et rester le plus proche possible du coin, c'est exactement d'ailleurs ce qu'il a, qu a réussi à faire pour, pour laisser quelque chose de, de difficile à jouer à Rizzo derrière. Et so now they, they both have to play very difficult shot with uh, some, uh, some curves. Yeah. Uh, tricky, tricky shots for a beginning of a set.
Yes, it's just okay. like uh, within the same shots or maybe we, by curving a little bit, but it's always a two cushion uh, with some English. Uh, and the aim of that kind of shots is to come up into this kind of position. So to do the, um, the, in, the, the inner pin or the outer pin in that case, because you come to the close to the center with both balls and then you have to play on one rail, which is even not easy. Because if you play and and you take the other two, the, I mean, or or the red one or the, the the inner pins, then the opponent is playing the same shot afterwards, or a two cushion or a three cushion, mm -hmm. and so quite an easy one. Ouais, donc on a vu des des coups là de en deux bandes avant avec euh, avec beaucoup d'effets, éventuellement même un peu de courbe. Où le but du jeu était de, bon, éventuellement de faire des, des quilles, mais aussi d'essayer de ramener les deux billes euh, sur la sur la longueur du billard, euh, de, de part et d'autre euh, des quilles, pour laisser un coup encore un peu plus difficile à l'adversaire. Parce que finalement, euh, si on fait euh, que des deux bandes avant de manière classique, euh, en envoyant la, la bille adverse sur la quille rouge, on laisse à chaque fois le même coup à l'adversaire. Euh, là, le fait de, de ramener les billes euh, dans l'axe dans l'axe médian du billard, là, dans la longueur, ça permet de laisser un coup encore plus difficile à l'adversaire et de faire bouger le jeu finalement. On a another interesting position here with a, a, yeah. a nice force uh, found by uh, Rizzo. So he didn't score the pins, but he found uh, the exact pace to to cover with the uh, with the red ball so now paolo exactly. has to play two questions first. Yeah. yeah and there's that um, in that position i think paolo doesn't have much uh, much choice so he, he plays to to score the point maybe or to defend but um, there was not many options <laughs> yeah basically you play to score the points uh, and you try to have the, the chance to get uh, uh, the red one and to move uh, into a difficult position. What was not that case because uh, he took a quite easy shot, but with a very uh, remarkable um, ball position for, uh, for Ciro David Ritz. Mm -hmm. ouais, donc, euh, sur le coup précédent, euh, le but de Marcoline était simplement d'essayer de, de faire le point et euh, ben, espérer laisser une position difficile à, à Rizzo et malheureusement il a, il a laissé un, un trois bandes, un giro euh, que Rizzo a une nouvelle fois euh, très bien exécuté en, en amenant euh, sa propre bille euh, quasiment euh, collée dans le coin Donc, euh, encore une fois une belle séquence de, de Rizzo une belle réponse As you can see, then the matches are quite uh, often developing on these two different parts of the of the billiard. Then you have to choose whether if you want to go close with your ball to the long rail or if you want to open uh, and then uh, uh, try to do the mistake on the other side. It's on the other side. It's just uh, a choice for the for the player. In that case, there is uh, uh, the possibility for for Davide. To go for the two cushion because the ball was not uh, very linked to the to the long rail. Yeah. The best position is not to be linked to the to the to the rail, but not is just not to have enough uh, space to go between the rail and the ball. So mid and mid, two three centimeters are quite the best position where it's not easy to recover from. Donc sur les, la séquence qu'on vient de voir. Uh... Euh, Marcoline a joué euh, un devant d'avant, donc une, une garoufa devant d'avant, où il a essayé de, de se rapprocher de la grande bande, mais finalement il a laissé un, un tout petit peu trop d'espace euh, entre la, la grande bande et sa bille, ce qui fait que Rizzo a, a pu enchaîner avec euh, un devant d'avant euh, en, en réussissant à faire des points et la défense. Donc les, les meilleures positions hein, qu'on puisse laisser, euh, c'est. Euh, euh, pas forcément euh, directement collé sur la bande, mais euh, 
suffisamment proche pour que la bille adverse ne puisse pas passer derrière. C'est dans ces cas-là que, que l'adversaire va se poser le plus de questions, finalement. And another time, uh, now uh, Rizzo shows that uh, he's, uh, uh, when it comes to attacking. And also Marco. Yes. Yes, but uh, it was an attack where he was uh, considering to get the red ball uh, and uh, try to go in a in a, in a safe uh, position with the, with his one, so to get as much part of the red one in order not to let his ball run uh, everywhere. And uh, he did ten points. At the end, uh, it, it had no no different chance. Uh, was attacking, but uh, with. Uh, an idea of what uh, could be the develop of the shot. Maybe it was a little bit too short. And then he, Paolo came up with, uh, uh, with uh, a good scoring. And so they are still close. But in any case, also from Paolo's shot, uh, Davide was able to shot again a uh, uh, front shot. Mm -hmm. Oui, well, so we saw a sequence of attack from the part of the two players. The first coup of de, de Rizzo was probably uh, un coup qu'il a joué euh, en se souciant surtout euh, d'arriver euh, très gros sur la bille rouge qui était, qui était proche de la grande bande euh, dans, le, dans le coin euh, pour euh, assurer le fait de, de rester en haut, assurer les quatre points et éventuellement faire des kills. Donc on voit qu'il réussit à faire, à faire 10 points mais derrière, euh, à chaque fois, les, le, le joueur suivant a pu avoir un, un coup d'attaque s'il a joué et donc on a, on a enchaîné les, les gros coups euh, sans, uh, uh, sans défense, finalement. In that case, uh, the sequence is stopped when one of the players is uh, trying to find a very good position, defense position from Paolo. And the mistake of the shot that, uh, on uh, Ciro Davide Rizzo, in that shot, which is called Garufa, which is a, uh, a reverse English uh, uh, shot that takes the, the name from the inventor of the shot, which was a an engineer from 1933 in Italy. Uh, and the mistake from Davide is that he was uh, trying to get the ball from the back to the pins. The ideal part of the shot is to take the ball in the opposite way. So to exchange uh, the quarters and to start again within uh, this kind of uh, uh, sequence on the balls in the, in the angle. So it was entering into that little part to uh, not enough. It's better to get into uh, much more than this than in, in this lower part. Ouais, donc la, la séquence d'attaque dont on vient de parler euh, euh, s'est finalement arrêtée euh, sur, le, euh, sur un coup d'attaque de Marcoline où il a réussi à, à défendre, à laisser euh, une position très difficile à Rizzo qui devait faire une, une garoufa. Donc... Euh, de, de l'ingénieur italien Garuffa en 1933, in, inventé par, par cet homme-là. Et euh, sur, cette, sur cette grande Garuffa, en fait, Rizzo fait l'erreur de ne pas passer suffisamment derrière la bille. Il faut, il faut viser à, à rentrer encore plus que ça derrière la bille, quitte à la prendre en une seule bande avant, plutôt que de rester trop à l'intérieur. On voit qu'il a laissé euh, une, encore une position d'attaque euh, à Marcoline, on n'a pas profité malheureusement, mais euh, c'était la, la petite erreur du tien. At the end, here is just the number of the pins, the quality of the front shots, which is making the difference. They are still close. So let's see what will come up on in the last uh, part of the set. So, uh, and it's quite not an easy position that one because it's not straight a shot. But let's see what's happening here. Yeah, the Rizzo cannot play uh, the, the the soft shot to go in the pins. No. He must uh, do something something different. And yeah, we see that. Uh, Maybe he loses a bit control of his ball. I don't know if it's the, the quantity. Yes, a ball. little bit. I think that in his in his mind, uh, 
He wanted to go as much close uh, to the uh, opposite short rail to find uh, uh, not an easy position. In that case, I think that Marco can play for uh, uh, a front shot, uh, longer, longer, and, uh, and come up to a, a not easy defense because there is also the red ball that has to be considered or to go for a three cushion. Let's see what can be the, the choice. Dans le, dans le coup précédent, euh, Luca pense que David Avizzo voulait envoyer sa bille jaune beaucoup plus à gauche sur l'image là, euh, proche de la petite bande. Euh, et là, on voit que Marcolin qui avait le choix entre euh, un trois bandes, un hein, Giro euh, et euh, cette attaque euh, dans la largeur a choisi l'attaque. Euh, et euh, il vient de faire euh, 14 points, donc euh, gros coup d'attaque qui l'amène à 57. So, uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of phone shots and uh, these 14 points at this moment of the set are, uh, yeah, a, a good option for, for a win. We can consider the same uh, choice that Rizzo, that, that was done by Ciro Davide Rizzo uh, when he played uh, in the first set uh, fast uh, into the pins. So he was taking the mm -hmm. red ball for sure. And he was trying to arrive on the red and on the red one in the uh, in the in the easiest way and uh, trying to find uh, a, a a contact that would not have been uh, a problem or making him lose points. Uh, he was attacking for sure, and that was quite fair. In that case, uh, it was also uh, Chiro that was doing a. Uh, five cash on fast because he has to recover back into into the pins uh, after uh, the fifth uh, the, the fifth rail, uh, considering that only three points were missing to Paolo. Mm. Ouais, donc là on a finalement sur son gros coup d'attaque euh, Paolo Marcolin qui avait fait un choix un peu similaire à, à Ciro Davide Rizzo euh, dans le premier set où il avait choisi une, de, de faire une attaque en arrivant fort sur la rouge, euh, en, prenant, en prenant le risque pour, se, pour vraiment essayer de se détacher et faire le break. Euh, donc dans ces cas-là, le, le joueur essaie simplement de choisir le, le bon côté pour arriver sur la rouge et, et ne pas donner de points à son adversaire. And then uh, Chiro David Rizzo was trying to to go close to the red ball with the opponent's uh, one, so just to find uh, uh, the possibility to... In that case, uh, we can see the replay, so it's just short, that shot. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a big mistake, because in any case, uh, long could have been better in any... In, uh, could, could give an, a, a much chance to do uh, a defense. A short, uh, you always uh, lose... Uh, Uh, with no no possibility. If you want to play short, you don't have to play uh, to go um, in uh, in the middle on the in the other part of the table. You just have to play to go close to the uh, to to the short rail and then go more or less uh, in, in the other part of the table, close to 30 or close to the pins. But uh, it was not an easy defense in any case. It was just trying to put mass, maximum pressure, was not able to, and then Paolo was able to close the set, and one to one, that's easy. Un progetto della federazione che ci è piaciuto fin da subito. E saremo sempre io e questo signore qui a fianco. Eh sì, per raccontarvi alcune parti della storia del biliardo. E si parte venerdì 8 maggio alle ore 15 su Biliacciano. E poi sul canale YouTube di Edora per il processo. Quindi vi aspettiamo su Bigliacciano. Il canale del biliardo. We are back on track and uh, as uh, quite often we will see during all the matches between very... Uh, very talented players. We will start always from this kind of position and they will try to move uh, by playing on a, on a cushion with, uh, in this case, positive English. So uh, 
uh, it's uh, if, it, if we figure out uh, on a clock it's uh, more or less uh, three o'clock english and then uh, they start to move from this uh, from this position just like that it's quite uh, the same shot in two cushions and uh, they are playing for the pins if you play and you get the ball on the right side uh, by looking at, at the shot you can find a defense uh, but uh, you can also play a little bit faster to go to get close to the opposite uh, short rail it's uh, it's a choice personal absolutely Bon, donc on est sur un, un début de set euh, assez classique hein, avec euh, beaucoup de bandes avant jouées euh, par les joueurs, les positions de défense. This is a, a, a play. Uh, they played for a position uh, by considering the red ball. In Italian, it's called passaggio, that shot. So you pass through one one uh, one side to the other of the uh, of the billiard table, and uh, the only thing that you can do here is just to find a way to open the game by getting the other the other one and put uh, the opponent's ball uh, on on the other short rail. In that case, there was a kiss. It was not not easy, maybe, to find and to see. The right uh, point to to go into the long rail, and I think that uh, then here is will pay some a lot of points. It's quite easy. They just have to find a good uh, speed just to defend uh, the, the other shot. Uh, Traversino is the name of that shot, and it's one of the most important uh, uh, shots in uh, five pins because you can do a lot of points and recover. It's just like if you play straight, the, the, the filotto, but on a very short part of the table. Yes. On, vient de, on vient de voir Paolo Marcolin jouer uh, un, des, un des coups classiques uh, les plus importants du 5 key, hein, le traversino, donc uh, uh, la bille uh, de l'adversaire uh, balayeur du billard uh, dans les dans les keys. C'est un coup très important parce qu'on peut faire à la fois beaucoup de points. Donc on a vu que euh, Marcolin a fait 8 points. Et en plus, on peut laisser euh, euh, des positions de défense très difficiles. C'est exactement ce qu'a réussi euh, Paolo Marcolin dans ce dans ce là en laissant une, une défense euh, dans la largeur qui est extrêmement difficile à contrer. Yeah, nice, nice, uh, nice play from Marcolin and... Uh, Unfortunately, the, the opportunity that he has uh, just after that, he, he makes only two points and, uh, and no defense. So maybe, uh, maybe a little mistake the, on, the, on the previous shot. Yeah. <clears throat> and now with the replay of uh, another traversing yeah. of it from this is the correct this is the, the, the correct line to go into the pins mm -hmm. but the line was not straight so he had to stop and uh, and to get a little bit uh, less than the full ball and it's not easy to go and to move so much close to the center so it's uh, it's not easy the, the risk was to lose uh, to do uh, uh, to lose then afterwards point because uh, the, the problem is that you move close to the center of the billiard and then paolo was able to play uh, long to long to long rail and he did 14 points it took a risk uh, but Maybe some other place would go to play on one cushion uh, and uh, go for the pins uh, by cushion. It's a ch it's a, it's a way of playing and it's very very personal. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I can't say it's better one or the other. It depends on the skills of each player. Yeah, of course, it depends on, uh, on the, the style of play and uh, how you feel on the on the shot when you when you see the position.
in that case is still a, a traversino just like we call the, the the shot so long to long rail uh, and it was uh, too big the part of the ball that he took uh, because then uh, the the, um, the shot is developing through the the english that you go that you can transmit into the other ball uh, on the other hand uh, there was also a mistake from uh, from rizzo but the recover was quite okay because there is still the red ball which is in the starting point always consider that we the, these players will move the red ball only if you are forced to do it because it's uh, they still have the chance to get some recover within that uh, position mm -hmm. yeah, so we have seen two coups um, à vide de, de, de chaque joueur donc uh, Paolo Marcolin qui a essayé de jouer un traversino mais uh, dans la bille uh, un peu trop grosse et puis ensuite, euh, un Giro David Rizzo qui a joué un, un Giro, mais pareil, en prenant la bille un peu trop grosse, et en laissant sa bille euh, dans le coin, et en emmenant la bille de, de Paul Marcolin derrière la bille rouge. Euh, ce qui fait que finalement, on a, il s'en est bien sorti avec une, avec une belle position de défense. Et, euh, et Lucas a remarqué que, euh, le, sauf s'ils y sont obligés, euh, à ce niveau-là, les, les joueurs vont pas forcément chercher à retirer la bille rouge de cette position-là, puisque finalement, elle offre euh, beaucoup de positions de défense. Euh, donc, ça peut, euh, ça peut aider à, à faire des coups euh, à la fois efficaces en, en attaque et en défense. Donc, ils ont tout temps. This is à, one à, of that euh, cases, and this is really one of that cases because you have uh, the red one which is uh, exactly on in the line of the five cushion but you know that if you get it from the inside you can do pins and it's just done on purpose that one so it's not uh, done by uh, chance but it's uh, really a shot developed and, and thought about thinking to get the red ball on that side and uh, you still get uh, in a quite good position the idea is to go quite close to the link of the two rays Ouais, donc là, Paolo Marcolin vient de jouer un, un des coups justement où on peut exploiter la rouge euh, pour essayer de faire des points. Donc euh, dans, dans ce cas-là, la rouge est exactement sur la trajectoire du 5 bandes en fait. Euh, et on sait que si on prend la rouge sur la partie euh, interne, euh, eh bien, euh, la bille de l'adversaire va aller faire des points dans les quais. Donc c'était absolument pas euh, un coup de chance de la part de Marcolin, mais c'était euh, bel et bien voulu. Uh, de faire uh, de faire ces 11 points. And now again we are in a, in a typical position for the traversino. So yeah. uh, once again the, the the pace the force is very very important to try to find the points and also the the defense. Yes, in that case, you cannot play on in uh, three three in, on three rows because there is the red one which is on the second uh, row. So he has to develop just like that the shot. Uh, mm -hmm. Without the red one, it would go to play very very fast, just like in the other shots. But within the red one in that position, he cannot do it. Mm. Okay, with the red one in that position, in fact. Uh... On ne peut pas jouer euh, trois passages dans la largeur. Donc, euh, euh, Paolo Marcolin choisit de faire euh, simplement deux passages dans la largeur pour faire les, les huit points comme il vient de faire là euh, en remontant et euh, en essayant de laisser une, une position la plus difficile possible. Euh, en essayant de laisser une défense, mais je pense qu'il est un tout petit peu trop court pour la défense. I think so that uh, Paolo is uh, just a little bit too short for the, for the defense. And indeed, uh, I'm sure that the Rizzo was able to see the ball and uh, and to score some uh, yeah. some points. And maybe he wanted to uh, to get closer to the red ball here to try to have uh, some some defense or or some yeah. more points. Yeah. If I can go into the replay, Mirko, of the previous uh, the last shot of David Rizzo, I can show you something for the traversino. Um, I just need to see the position of the balls uh, of the, the the last shot of uh, of David. Yeah, 
Ecco, se puoi fermare l'immagine, prima che tiri Davide, ti faccio vedere una cosa. Ecco, in this position it's just like if you start from a neg negative position. So positive you, if you just have to play straight or, or, or are, are quite on the same line, this is negative. But when you have the red ball over there, uh, you can also, if you stay, if you are a little bit uh, shorter, it won't not be a, a, a very uh, bad thing because in any case, uh, he cannot go and play also in, he cannot play fast, he cannot play on uh, just like the same one that was playing uh, Mark, uh, Paolo, and so he has to play uh, directly and straight to the pins. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's not an easy play, and uh, it's also something that you have to consider, because uh, this red one is uh, good, was good in, in, as a position for, for Paolo, even if it was possible to play, but was not, not good for, the, for, uh, for Davide. Uh, because uh, he, he could not develop two of, of the three shots, he just had one choice. Because if we, go, give a, if we remember the, the traversino done from Paolo, he could have done this one or maybe go for the two cushion. In that case, there was only one choice. Dans le, dans le coup sur lequel on, on est revenu, là, le coup de Davide Rizzo, euh, il ne pouvait malheureusement pas jouer euh, le même schéma que, que celui de Paolo Marcolin en faisant euh, deux fois la largeur du billard parce que la bille rouge était sur le trajet. Donc euh, il était obligé d'envoyer la bille directement dans le château et en essayant de, de laisser les billes de part et d'autre de la bille rouge. Mais euh, la, la bille rouge, dans ce cas-là, euh, était très favorable au, pour le coup de, de Paolo Marcolin, mais euh, au contraire très gênante pour le coup de David Rizzo. And once again, both are on the opposite uh, uh, crossing of the race uh, in, in the table, so you have to go uh, or from one cushion with uh, reverse English, that case. It's called Sponda e Palla in Italian, so it's rail and ball, if it just translate basically from Italian to English. And uh, this is the result. The only thing that you don't have to do in that shot is to kiss. Ouais, donc là, on, on était dans, vraiment dans un, dans un coup classique euh, du, du Sanki avec euh, les billes euh, dans, les, dans les coins opposés, euh, avec euh, un joli coup euh, bande billes, euh, donc euh, Spanda Pala de euh, David et Rizzo. Donc, euh, voilà, le but est vraiment de, de garder sa bille euh, dans le coin euh, où, où est la bille adversaire et puis faire redescendre l'adversaire à travers tout le billard. Qu'est-ce que tu peux dire Davide, Ciro Davide Rizzo, il est de nouveau en train de faire une grande attaque, donc il est en train d'être offensif. Donc, c'est une intéressante choix. Il est aussi derrière. At the score, do you think it is one of the reasons why he, he chose to, to, to take the risk? Uh, it's a personal choice. If you would ask me what I was shooting in that shot, I would have been going from a two cushion short, uh, long to short rail. Uh, because uh, the chance to do eight or ten points or to recover was not uh, so high. That's my personal opinion. Uh, and uh, in any case, I would try to find a position to recover and to find a sequence where I could get back from the, uh, the 10 points uh, that he was uh, still missing to, to gain uh, uh, and to recover from, 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 uh, from Paolo's... Uh... David Rizzo a fait un choix très offensif uh, sur, le, sur le coup précédent. Euh, qui aurait pu être aussi, hein, on aurait pu éventuellement faire le choix de faire un autre. Euh, parce que là, le, les chances de, de cette attaque étaient quand même peut-être euh, assez minces. Donc on pouvait faire le choix d'être un peu plus raisonnable et d'attendre une, une meilleure position pour essayer de mettre en difficulté l'adversaire. Some, uh, yeah. some interesting shots yeah. I make with uh, 
in cloud. This is not easy also because you have to balance uh, the English and the speed, because in any case, English is also a speed. If we think about a vector, and so you have to combine both. Uh, if you start uh, and you have too much uh, speed, then uh, uh, combined with the English, uh, the, the, the result of the shot will be too fast and too long. And so it's very, very tricky. Uh, I think that if you are under pressure, it's still even more trickier. Bon, dans, les, dans les coups précédents, euh, sur David Erizzo a euh, fait un, un joli devant d'avant avec, euh, avec une courbe. Et euh, une des, des choses les plus difficiles est probablement de réussir à combiner à la fois euh, la force euh, et la courbe. Donc euh, réussir à, à faire cette courbe pour contourner le, les quilles euh, sans donner trop de force à, à sa bille pour euh, conserver euh, la possibilité de défendre. Donc c'est euh, vraiment un des points clés. Euh, qui est d'autant plus difficile à réaliser quand on est sous pression dans ce genre de match. And this is a two cushion. Uh, the idea was to get the red, the, the, uh, sorry, the red, the yellow ball close to the two rails. Uh, because in that case it was uh, tricky to get out from the position. Now um, Paolo can go for uh, a one cushion with the English. Basically it's the same construction of the shot when you play a two cushion with the English. You just have to understand uh, how to get in and out. Uh, my personal um, tip is that you have to work uh, much more with the English and less with the speed in that kind of shot. Mm -hmm. Do you think you, you can play so with the, the two cushions or one cushion with English? Uh, is it around about uh, the same force or do you play maybe with a, a bit more force uh, if it's one cushion only? It's not with, the, with the, the same force. You can use a little bit much more than, the, than speed, the, much more speed, but you give it with the English. So is uh, mm -hmm. that you can combine a little bit uh, much a little bit uh, much more speed and uh, uh, this would not would not be a problem if you play a two cushion the two balls are uh, even developing different speeds and so it's not easy but when you play and you are so close to the to, to the um, to the short cushion you can play a little bit with much more speed mm -hmm. because a part of the speed will be lost uh, by playing uh, um, on the cushion, mm -hmm. and in that case, uh, it's still uh, a position when uh, you have to play fast, and uh, and the Rizzo was playing the right shot. the The scheme of the shot is just like that one, so just to do pins or not to do pins in any case, but just to exchange uh, the balls from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. David Erizzo, le, le but était pas forcément de faire beaucoup de points dans l'équipe, mais surtout d'essayer de euh, retrouver une position de défense, parce que la, la position était particulièrement difficile, euh, ce qu'il a, euh, a réussi à faire. And uh, yeah, there, I, I think so. Paolo, in that case, it was him who made uh, quite an offensive choice. Uh, after the uh, the two questions of uh, Giro David Erizzo, he, he chose yeah, to make a big yeah. attack, and unfortunately, so he, he didn't score. Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe maybe you could you... play also uh, Sponda Palla, so one question and then. Uh... If we go back to the position, you can see that Sponda Palla is not easy because. Uh, uh, there is too much space between the ball and the long cushion. But you can see where is the mismatch. It's here. When you start, when you see start uh, Paolo uh, shooting, you see that he's moving. And so it's not straight. If you can a little bit back, you see the hand of Paolo, which is moving uh, just like before shooting. No. You start. You have to start a little bit bef before Mirko, 
Eh, devi partire un pelo prima e far vedere cosa succede quando brandeggia Paolo. In that case you see that it's moving. Wait, you will see that. And then it will be moving when it will be shooting. You see that was closing uh, and moving a little bit outside. Uh, it's quite the last part of the shot and you see it from the back uh, that is moving uh, uh, on, on, uh, on the left side. And so is taking uh, is less part of the ball that was needed. You have to, to, to get not, not the full ball, but quite the full ball. Otherwise, the risk is that you play the same shot on the other part and then Rizzo did 10 points as you as you as you can as we see uh, so it's uh, it's a choice maybe under pressure it was not easy to play it uh, but it was not easy also to play uh, Sponda Palla as you told because the, the distance between the ball and the uh, and the rail was too much in my opinion so good choice uh, but bad mm -hmm. execution if you can speak about that D'accord. Donc, euh, David Rizzo vient de faire euh, 10 sur un coup d'attaque. Et sur le coup précédent, euh, euh, Paolo Marcolin essaye aussi de faire, euh, de faire un gros coup d'attaque avec euh, euh, donc, le, le choix d'une bande avant qui était, qui était difficile puisque la bille, de, la bille jaune était euh, un peu trop éloignée de la grande bande. Euh, et euh, Paolo Marcolin, finalement, euh, manque son coup euh, simplement pour une euh, une petite erreur technique puisqu'on le voit bouger pendant son exécution donc il prend la vie euh, un tout petit peu trop fine et ça lui coûte euh, à la fois l'exécution euh, et puis euh, la position de défense donc euh, il, il le paye cher hein, sur, euh, sur la séquence finalement et là aussi Thierry David Rizzo qui est en to and the set because he's missing only eight points so he plays he really plays for the red ball and then uh, maybe the pins but uh, the the main target is the red ball probably yeah donc là sur le sur le coup précédent on a euh uh, David Rizzo qui qui joue pour essayer de finir le set mais euh, son intention principale c'était vraiment de, de faire les quatre points donc venir toucher la bille rouge euh, ne surtout pas aller donner de points euh, dans les quilles et s'il fait le deux bandes euh, avec la bille de, de Marcoline s'il le fait parfaitement alors il finit le set mais, mais c'était euh, optionnel Yes, then Paolo was uh, forced to play uh, a defense so go close to the red one with the Uh, the opponent's ball and uh, I I may disagree with this choice uh, uh, with this shot when the, with the Ciro Davide Rizzo because uh, if you are at 58 I think uh, that you don't need uh, to play um, so in that way so Paolo cannot close the game at this stage so I think it would have been better to play a, a defense and move to the to the next shot and so paolo did only two points here but if uh, he would have been doing the red one or whatever he would uh, play for uh, uh, maybe a last shot also himself and then also mm -hmm. here uh, davide has to play just to touch the other ball Just imagine if, if, if Paolo was doing uh, six or eight points, now it could have been different because uh, he would uh, shot uh, to win uh, the set and actually has to shot again, I think, uh, uh, not fast, but absolutely, and find uh, another possibility to, to close in two shots and let the white ball close to the hoo <clears throat> A little mismatch. It's not easy to play with close balls, as you can imagine. Ouais, donc là on, on se retrouve. Uh, it's a bit like the end of the first uh, first set in in the end because uh, um, yeah. Ciro David also had some uh, some points ahead and uh, he made some uh, um, offensive choice that uh, that lead to maybe a difficult situation for him, whereas it could have been easier. 
So, so yeah, but Denmark, remember that uh, remember yeah, that yeah, position yeah. because we will see it also uh, often. So you have the red one when you you, you play to go to close to the red one in that position in that case because uh, it's not easy to do eleven. So you won't be you won't stay close in, or in the side where you can. Uh, uh where your opponent can do the four not the, th the, the the three in that case so it's better mm. to go for the three even if you miss two points uh it's better to recover and to do a tricky position just like uh, rizzo was uh, just mm. like uh, sorry paul was doing yeah. and in that and case so also... paolo was also aiming to go into the central part of the, the table not to uh, to go with the, his ball close to the short to the long rail. Mm. Ouais, donc on se retrouvait dans une, dans une situation assez proche de, de la fin du premier set final avec euh, Rizzo qui fait un, un choix très offensif alors que euh, Marcolin était à ce moment-là encore à, à 45 donc euh, 58-45 il y avait un, un peu de marge. Euh, il a la chance sur la bosse de, de ne pas donner de points. Et derrière, euh, Marcoline essaie de trouver des solutions pour, euh, pour finir le set euh, euh, ben, en deux ou trois fois. Euh, C'est pour ça qu'il fait le, le choix de jouer euh, doucement sur les, sur les deux positions d'attaque qu'il avait euh, avec les billes euh, très proches euh, l'une de l'autre. Euh, et là, il essaye donc un, un cinq bandes avec euh, l'arrivée derrière la rouge. Mais c'est légèrement, uh, légèrement court. This one is, uh, is just uh, slightly uh, a, bit too, a bit too short, the, the five cushions. It was uh, maybe the, the, uh, the choice for uh, ending this and also finding a defense in case, it, if he, in case he was missing it. Yes. Uh because he could have been uh, able to play also a three cash on and go for the red ball and try to go to do 12 uh, mm -hmm. but in my opinion he, he did uh, uh, the right choice because uh, he could have been uh, closing also doing 11 in that shot or maybe doing also seven and then have a good recover he did only three but uh, it was very close uh, with the uh, uh, the opponent's ball to the, the red one so it was not easy also for rizzo to close and in that case, now is still Paolo that has the chance to win the set. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he did it. Was a nice shot. Yeah, nice shot to end the set for eight, so eight points. And uh, in that case, uh, maybe he was uh, he was able to end because he he shot it uh, slightly harder than than usually. To, to try to to change the trajectory to the pins because he, he was obliged to to aim a full ball i think featuring a unique yeah. muscular structure it guarantees razor sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity unquestionably the best ball balls in the world this set is available in a tv and a value pack version as well as in the new my rmf range of ball and q cases now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go my rmf Bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Uh, coming back to what we were telling before, Maxime, he was coming from uh, uh, the closer part of the pins. So it's quite, uh, you, if you aim to do four or eight, it's quite po it's, it's also possible that you do four and then you get also uh, the, the red pin by uh, the fact that these pins are are collapsing close to the red one and so it's mm -hmm. uh, a part of the shot that you have to consider you play a little bit faster and you try also to gain from the position and to get uh, the, um, the red one too you can also play and do eight it's uh, quite the same and uh, mm -hmm. that's that's why he was not able to go for the red with his with his ball and also for the pin so he had the, to ch the chance to close and he had to shot to do eight in, in, in that way or, or in the or in the other. There was no way to recover after that, so he had, he had to, to take the chance to win the set and he did it. Mm -hmm.
Donc, donc sur le, le coup précédent euh, pour la, la fin de set par euh, Marcolin, euh, finalement, on, euh, y il avait, y avait très peu de choix. Hein. C'était euh, euh, soit, euh, soit gagner le set sur ce coup-là, soit euh, très probablement euh, le perdre sur le coup suivant. Donc, euh, il s'est permis de le jouer légèrement plus fort que, que la mesure habituelle euh, pour essayer de compter euh, soit sur les 8 points euh, directement avec sa bille, euh, soit sur le fait qu'une quille aille en abattre une autre et, et c'est ce qui s'est passé là euh, chose qui arrive d'ailleurs assez souvent euh, quand, on, quand on fait ce genre de coup euh, en demande Just to take uh, the it's something that you uh, don't find in other uh, billiard games so Normally we, we play with the uh, with the longer with the longer cue that it's just done only for the pins. Uh, in three cushion and in the other games you will not find that. You find the rack, and uh, mm -hmm. it's quite tricky because uh, when the Italian players are going to play, for example, in uh, Brandenburg or in places where uh, the red pins uh, are there, uh, you, they won't find the. Uh, the, the, the long uh, cues and they have always to remind to take uh, these uh, little parts that we can add in the back of the queue just to take them longer. Uh, we are not used to play with the rack and it's a pity because uh, uh, people uh, that I have seen playing with the rack are very, very um, comfortable with that and uh, they are more precise in my opinion. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, For example, uh, it's in, the, in the snooker, they play with the rack. So just to give an example. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, uh, it's also a specific training. So if you are not used to play with it, then it's uh, it's very difficult to, to to improvise something. So yeah. yeah. So quite a quite a nice uh, three cushion of uh, Rizzo here, yeah. who is uh, still uh, very efficient on the on the attack shocks shots. Yeah, it's the same, just like uh, the end of the previous set. So if you come from inside, you can get the chance to get also the red one uh, because it's a part of the of the of the, of the shot. Because the pins are going close to the red one, you can do eight instead of four. Mm. Yeah, exactly. At, this, at these levels, they consider that it's better to play in that way than to get uh, uh, a wider shot. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, sur, le, sur le coup précédent de Rizzo, sur le, le, le Giro, trois bandes, euh, yeah. on a vu que la ville de Marcoline était allée passer sur euh, l'intérieur du château. Euh, qui est le, finalement euh, la partie où il est un peu plus raisonnable de se tromper. Parce que si, on, si on fait un coup en passant sur l'extérieur du château, euh, bien finalement on va laisser un coup d'attaque euh, assez facile à l'adversaire, alors qu'en passant sur l'intérieur des quilles, euh, on laisse quelque chose de, de beaucoup plus difficile, euh, voire euh, une défense. Et c'est ce qui s'était passé euh, dans ce cas-là où Marcoline avait un une attaque quand même très difficile à jouer. Où il a fait que deux d'ailleurs. Yes, and this is one of the cases when the players are forced to play and to move the red ball because there is no other chance to uh, to play. So you can play also slow, but it's not the case. So uh, you, you you try to play to do as much as you can uh, and uh, and then to find a position. That, wa that was not the case, because then he will have to play a short uh, filotto and there is also the red ball which recovers in any case. Donc on, on a vu Marcoline jouer uh, de nouveau hein, une, une attaque uh, avec uh, l'arrivée sur la vie rouge uh, qui n'avait pas bougé, hein, toujours pas depuis le début du set, alors qu'on on en est à, comme on était à plus d'une dizaine de points uh, chacun. Donc, euh, ça fait encore une fois partie des, des coups euh, pour lesquels euh, les joueurs sont un peu contraints de bouger cette bille rouge. Euh, donc, ils en profitent euh, sur des coups d'attaque. C'est que ces coups d'attaque qui vont déclencher ça. 
Eine gute Defense hier von, äh, von äh, ja. Paolo, because uh, the, so the ball of Rizzo was uh, uh, a lot too close to the cushion, so you couldn't go behind. So you needed to find a, a way to uh, to have a defense. So it was a long rail first, and to try to put back the the balls uh, well as it, as he did in the in the two other corners. Exactly. This one is exactly a two cushion, and uh, the mistake is done on purpose in that position because you can recover. You have also the red ball. You can, you can do the red ball, or in any case, it comes up to a different position when Rizzo will be playing the next shot. Yeah, it's quite interesting that the Marcolin on the coup precedent qui. Euh, on pourrait croire qu'il qu se trompe sur son devant d'avant, mais il fait exprès hein, de, de la prendre sur l'extérieur euh, pour se retrouver euh, dans le coin où la rouge va le protéger du château finalement. Donc euh, c'est ce qui s'est passé d'ailleurs. Hein, Rizzo ne pouvait pas envoyer la bille de, de Marcoline dans le château en devant d'avant. Euh, donc euh, à ce niveau-là, les joueurs sont capables de, de choisir le, le côté. Euh, Uh, le côté pour arriver en demande avant, uh, en fonction de la position de la bille rouge, uh, en fonction du type de défense qu'ils veulent laisser et de comment ils veulent se protéger. In that case, was trying, trying to go. Yeah, maybe, maybe it took uh, just uh, the ball a bit too full. And even if it's a defense, uh, well, the ball is uh, is very very close to the to the pins, so it's uh, it's a danger in that case for him. Yeah. Yeah. Paolo is just slightly too short. Yeah, exactly. And in that case, so only two points for uh, for Rizzo, but uh, the with a very good force to yeah. to have a defense uh, with uh, two cushions after the the, the zero after the three, the three first cushions. So uh, yeah, exactly. So even in that case here, um, Paolo was uh, choosing to. To come a bit uh, on the inside of the yellow ball to send it to the to the long rail here, you think? I think uh, that it's quite uh, a mistake in terms of speed, and that's it. Uh, the idea was that one, just like uh, a little bit too much speed. Okay. And it's still a Sponda Pala, so uh, it's the same shot that we have we saw uh, several times during these sets. Uh, this was quite, uh, uh, it was between a normal one and the wider one we were speaking before when uh, Paolo uh, played for the Filotto and uh, we were asking me in the set before. So, yeah, yeah, okay, with, with this one, well, with the The ball of uh, of Rizzo very close to the to the short cushion. So, yeah, it yeah. the shot also also a bit harder to manage because uh, you do not want to to arrive uh, uh, full on the ball. Otherwise, you you got the rimpalo, the kiss, and uh, yeah. so quite uh, quite hard shots. But if you are very close to the short rail. Uh, you don't have to manage too much with the English the shot, so it's quite uh, uh, a good. It, it, it's quite easier. It's when you are not close to the short rail and you are a little bit uh, too far from the long one that it's not easy to manage uh, what you can do. Sometimes you don't you don't play for the pins. You just play uh, 
to open uh, uh, to open up the game and to find uh, a very good position uh, by dividing the two balls and getting closer to the long race. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah. In that case, there was a mismatch again from Rizzo, so short another time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, so um, Paolo yeah. chooses to, to play uh, the cushion first, which which looks yeah. uh, um, quite uh, quite logic. I think he, he was not able to, to play the, the ball first, but he decides to play uh, with a, quite a strong force. Um, yeah. do, you know, do, you, do you know why? Because it's, it's a bit risky. You do not know what will happen after the, after the red ball. No, it's not risky. Is that he took too much part of the ball? He can do eight or eleven, and uh, mm -hmm. taking a less less part of the ball. In that case, the white one would have been going uh, uh, in a different position. So it was the worst way to get uh, the ball to do mm -hmm. points. Uh, not lucky in that case. Mm -hmm. so le, le coup précédent de Play. Marco, où il joue, uh, I think that you, 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 the question. I think that the question is he could play slower or slow, but it's not so yeah. easy to play slow in that position. The mm -hmm. ball is very far from the pins and it's easier to play fast. Okay, okay, okay. Oui, donc dans le, dans le coup, précé, dans le coup précédent de, de Marc Paulin où il joue uh, une bande avant, uh, finalement, uh, uh, il la prend uh, um, presque de, de la pire des manières, parce que certes, il fait bon. Euh, mais euh, il voulait arriver sans doute euh, avec euh, beaucoup moins de billes pour essayer de, de toucher la rouge non pas après la, la grande bande en bas mais, mais avant euh, il n'aurait pas laissé euh, une position aussi facile à, à Rizzo et, euh, euh, alors ce qu'on pouvait penser c'était de le jouer euh, éventuellement en mesure euh, mais c'est euh, finalement assez dur à maîtriser comme coup donc euh, Donc, euh, le fait de s'assurer des points euh, euh, en jouant un peu plus fort est, est souvent un privilège. Je pense que la séquence là était intéressante aussi, avec une bonne défense de Rizzo. Et puis, une position très difficile à récupérer de Paolo. Donc, so, aussi une uh, typique uh, five pin séquence avec uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, to make uh, well put the opponent in a very very difficult position, also a strange position because it is not a, a classic defense uh, with the pins in the middle. It's a, it's a defense with the with the red ball. So interesting choice. Yeah, the only thing I can tell about the shot of Rizzo when he did only two is that. Uh, from a technical point of view, you should always play in front, not uh, on the, I mean, you see that now he's moving a, a little bit. So he was just trying to win uh, in one shot because he was a little bit moving exactly with all, all the arm. All the body. The yeah. aim okay. of the all shot was to play for the, for the, for, uh, for the, the the center part of the of the as you can of, of the pins because then he, the ball would have been moving into the center and there the would not have been the comeback from the other side so he could win in one shot by doing 10 then uh, uh, the recover from paolo should have been very very difficult mm. Une petite erreur de Rizzo qui, sur, un, sur une attaque, sur un filoto assez simple, euh, fait finalement euh, deux points. Euh, on a vu qu'il y avait un, un gros mouvement d'épaule sur le, sur le coup, donc c'est peut-être euh, ce petit défaut technique euh, qui, euh, qui l'a fait faire euh, deux points au lieu de 8 ou 10. Et à ce moment-là, le parrain de la partie, ça aurait été... Euh, ça aurait été assez difficile pour euh, pour Marcoline de remonter puisque on était euh, quasiment sur le 40 donc euh, ça a été une, une grosse option pour lui pour gagner le set. Here you can play uh, on the long rail because you have the red ball which is uh, on the 
larger part of the of the pin so you will not do maybe the pins but you will try to go uh, to do the red one just like that way so it's wider than expected but this is the idea because in any case if you get there also the hand will not be easy uh, to be you put it on the table to shot afterwards in that case there is uh, there is enough space euh, avait vraiment pour but d'envoyer la jaune dans la zone de la rouge, euh, soit en venant toucher la rouge, soit en mettant simplement euh, la bille jaune très proche de, de la bille rouge pour, euh, pour poser une, un coup difficile, à la fois parce qu'il est loin et aussi parce qu'il est gêné par la bille rouge euh, à Rizzo. Euh, là, il y avait juste assez de place et, et ben, ça a suffi pour... Euh, Uh, yes. Uh, you have to you have to be very comfortable and uh, in my opinion a little bit crazy to play three cushion over there, starting from uh, the other part of the table. The quality of the shot between uh, one and ten was twelve in that case. Because there was no possibility to mismatch. And in that case They is playing that that shot because he wants to stay close to the red one. It would have been able also to do the the red ball. There is a recall, so the the, the red ball is recalling you to play in that way. Uh, on the mm -hmm. other hand, you can suffer from the shot that was suffering Paolo uh, two or three shots before. So just to play on the short rail, on the long rail, get the the yellow one and put the three balls close to the short rail. Let's see. Ouais, donc là on, sur le sur le demande avant précédent euh, euh, vu la <coughs> le score euh, Rizzo était euh, parce que contraint de jouer le une demande avant pour redescendre du côté de la bille rouge. Euh, donc euh, évidemment ça aurait pu lui permettre de, le, de de faire quelques points et de se mettre à l'abri. Le risque c'était aussi que Marcolin réussisse le coup de défense pour le mettre euh, ben, dans la même position qu'on a eu euh, il, y a, il y a quelques coups avec euh, l'habit de Rizzo dans le coin, l'habit de, de Marcoline au milieu de la petite bande et la rouge euh, entre les deux. Euh, donc là, on, bon, Paul Marcoline n'a malheureusement pas réussi son coup de défense, mais euh, c'était une des conséquences euh, éventuelles. Et donc là, Rizzo était juste... Uh, wanting to make four points and whatever whatever happens it was uh, the most important thing was to make four points with this kind exactly. of uh, with, with this kind of score and with this kind of position then uh, you you want to get to 55 and then in that case probably 59 if he plays also for the point Because uh, you don't want to miss uh, this, uh, let's say, easy points, and you want to put pressure on the on the opponent. Uh, I mean, I think it's uh, the, the, this match and this set. Uh, this set is uh, the the, mis the big mismatch uh, as. Uh, since now is that uh, Paolo was not able to do the same recover that Rizzo was doing uh, by the three balls close to the long rail. And so he mm -hmm. suffered, suffered from that because he was not able to recover and to get uh, one shot, uh, one good shot starting from there. Now if he's doing mm -hmm. uh, with the right speed can also recover that shot, but it's not easy. Ouais, donc euh, Luca, Luca nous dit bien que finalement cette, euh, cette option défensive qui avait été choisie par Rizzo où, euh, où les trois billes étaient alignées le long de la petite bande avec, avec la rouge au milieu euh, c'est un peu le, le point de départ euh, qui, le, qui le met dans une très bonne, euh, dans une très bonne position euh, au score là, sur le 7 et euh, on voit que Marcoli n'arrive pas à trouver justement ce ce coup clé euh, qui lui permettra de faire à, à la fois euh, une belle attaque euh, et une défense euh, sur, le, sur le coup suivant. Euh, il n'arrive pas à trouver cette, cette défense euh, qui lui permettra de mettre vraiment en difficulté Rizzo. 
Bien, c'est reparti euh, pour la suite du, la suite du match. Ou plutôt hein, pour, quelques, pour quelques replays en attendant, euh, en attendant le, la, la pause des joueurs euh, et le cinquième set. Donc on va revoir quelques coups, euh, notamment ce coup de Norizo. Hein, où euh, ben finalement son unique but, hein, c'était d'arriver gros sur la vie rouge pour euh, ne pas aller se, se promener plus loin euh, avec la, la bijou, ne pas prendre de risques. Il a en plus fait des points dans le, dans le château, mais c'était euh, optionnel. Donc on voit euh, quelques, belles, euh, quelques belles exécutions, avec là une exécution parfaite hein, de, de Marcoline, qui en plus de faire la défense, fait... Une superbe attaque. Début du cinquième set, du coup, avec euh, une, une solution assez classique. Hein, pour... Pour le départ, on voit qu'il y avait vraiment euh, énormément de monde pour euh, poursuivre cette euh, demi-finale dans les tribunes. Une belle ambiance à Pistoia. Et on va voir euh, le cas des deux joueurs arrive à se démarquer un peu dans cette, euh, cette demi-finale. Avec un peu de tension à la... au retour de la pause. Euh, un giro qui pouvait sembler assez facile, mais qui, euh, mine de rien, euh, devait être euh, un peu travaillé par, euh, par Marcoline, qui a assuré finalement euh, la position de défense. C'est souvent euh, plus intéressant hein, d'assurer la défense que de tenter euh, les quilles. Euh, à 100% sans penser à ce qu'on laisse derrière à son adversaire. Encore un coup classique dont on parlait tout à l'heure avec euh, Luca. Une bande avant où Marcoline est arrivé un, un tout petit peu trop euh, large mais avec la bonne force, ce qui fait qu'il assure quand même derrière la défense. Je crois que l'un ne va pas sans l'autre. Hein. La force, enfin, le, le, le coup, c'est une, une question de force, mais aussi une question de visée. L'un peut sauver l'autre. Uh, here, the comeback from Paolo. Uh, Davide was trying to do a two cushion. Uh, as it's always my opinion, you have to miss uh, the pins from the other side. And so it was uh, 
uh, on a position where for Paolo was easy to get to recover and get back. <clears throat> also here the same. Um, the good part could have been the other one because in, uh, in a mismatch he could have been doing the red pin with the opponent's ball. Uh, and in that case, Paolo is, can be able to do a, again a two cash on. Une séquence intéressante là sur les sur les bandes avant, mais où les joueurs se laissent justement des bandes avant très classiques, donc avec une, une forte probabilité de faire finalement à la fois des points et une défense, mais à nouveau une défense très classique. Donc là, on voit que qu'on est sorti un petit peu de ce ce schéma et on change de, de type de bande avant. Where uh, Rizzo played uh, uh, roughly the same shot that uh, that Paolo uh, played uh, uh, in the in the previous set or the set before, I don't know if you remember, with a nice exactly. uh, nice nice pace once again just to. Uh, to ensure the fact that the, the white ball uh, comes back um, so behind the red ball or behind the, the pins. In that case, it's behind the red ball. So, yeah. yeah, good example. Too. And uh, <clears throat> the idea is to find out the good tempo to recover from. Uh, uh, and it, it's not easy to understand where the balls are going, but you have enough space uh, to manage the speed uh, and to find a good position. Uh. Yeah, Ces coups de, de une bande avant sont quand même plus faciles à gérer en les jouant avec cette force là pour essayer de faire euh, remonter la bille adverse euh, et la faire traverser finalement deux fois la largeur de, du billard plutôt que essayer de les jouer en mesure euh, avec euh, des chances de masquer qui se jouent euh, au centimètre près. Donc il euh, faut souvent jouer euh, un petit peu plus fort et, et voir quelles sont les autres options pour, pour masquer. And uh, there was a big mismatch from uh, Rizzo. Uh, some luck and also some luck here when uh, Paolo would have been able to do points. In any case, was uh, the wrong part of the of the shot uh, that was taken. Although he was uh, maybe able to do and to score a lot of points, but uh, he should have been aiming the other part of the the ball. And yeah. it was not paying a lot, only four points, but uh, it could have been worse. Donc sur le sur le coup précédent, hein, à ce niveau de à ce niveau de jeu, on considère ça comme, euh, comme une erreur de la part de Mark Collins qui fait euh, un devant d'avant euh, type euh, Garoufa, mais il prend, euh, il prend la bille du mauvais côté, l'envoie sur la bille rouge, et derrière, ben, on le paye euh, pas très cher puisque euh, Rizzo ne fait que 4 points sur son, sur son coup d'attaque. Et donc sur son devant d'avant, euh, Mark Collins voulait arriver de l'autre côté de la bille pour s'assurer la défense, mais ne surtout pas aller euh, toucher la rouge. Euh, et ne surtout pas laisser un, un coup d'attaque. Donc, euh, dans, des, dans des finesses du jeu, assez intéressantes à ce niveau-là. Et aussi, il est très offensif. And uh, with just the force to of the uh, three long, three three short trails and come back in the middle of the table. So uh, yeah, a tricky a tricky shot. And uh, it puts uh, Paolo in a in a difficult position where he is obliged to to play uh, well just one cushion first. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, it's a lucky part of the game uh, for Rizzo. Now he's doing a very, very nice shot. I think always that it's coming up from the fact that uh, 
Paolo was not taking enough care of the shot in the previous set. So uh, he put and he was able to get uh, Rizzo back into a comfortable position. Uh, and in that case, now it's, uh, it's still square, the match. And uh, it, could have, it could not have been uh, just like that way. Uh, but uh, the quality of the shot that decided the, 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 the set before, so the three cushion was crap. In my opinion, <laughs> amazing. Let's see what's happening now. They are still uh, square quite uh, also in uh, in the scoring of this set. Yes. But you can see that Rizzo is a little bit much more comfortable in shooting. He's not uh, playing so well also in the front shots because he did two mismatches. The first one where he took four points and was able to recover and the other one where he's coming back into the pins. But the uh, the, the shot was completely missed, so... Uh, and this is uh, very, a very open position to play and to do pins over there, and I think that Rizzo will not miss this opportunity. Yeah, it's the same shot that we saw in some, set, some sets behind, but... Uh, Sunset sets before, but uh, uh, you can play it whenever you want, uh, directly or uh, in that way. And in that way, you can play it because you have the recall of the red pin over there. Mm -hmm. You see also the expression of Paolo that is feeling that it's something that is not going in the, in the right way. And you feel that uh, uh, the match actually uh, has some good, uh, uh, I mean, signals for Rizzo. But I always mm -hmm. think that what's going good for your opponent is coming from something that is missing from your side. So there is not uh, so much luck. In any case, you can see that now it's quite everything straight for Rizzo that can play quite easily. But that's, yeah. uh, again, I think it's always that you are feeling not comfortable with the play. Mm. Well, uh, quelques, quelques coups de suite uh, ou, uh... Finalement, uh, Rizzo a, a des opportunités uh, assez faciles avec les billets assez proches. Uh, le, le traversino, donc l'attaque qui vient de faire dans la largeur, uh, où il pouvait choisir de, de jouer direct ou en deux bandes ou en trois bandes, uh, ou en trois passages. Uh, il a choisi de jouer direct pour revenir se, se coller sur la bille rouge, uh, toujours hein, pour, pour essayer de trouver ses, sa défense un peu particulière. Et là, un, un beau deux bandes. Uh, pour, euh, pour venir coller à nouveau sur la, sur la bille rouge. Donc, euh, des, belles, euh, des belles exécutions qui montrent que le, que le match tourne un peu en faveur de, de Rizzo pour, euh, pour cette partie-là. Oui, nous avons vu que le start was starting with the sequence uh, quite uh, amazing with uh, 6, uh, 11, and so he took 20 points from not very good shots. Uh, on the other hand, you, s you should be able in that kind of uh, uh, situations to keep calm, maybe start breathing, taking maybe some more seconds to keep uh, and to calm down and to uh, get over the pressure that this kind of situation are giving to you and maybe get out from bad thoughts uh, and not stay uh, with the mind with the mind always linked to maybe the set before uh, because it's stressful uh, when you think about bad shots the shot that we have the, the this nice game is the fact that the five pins it's uh, one play uh, one one shot each player so you can recover the shot after and uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the good thing that you have to learn is to forget the, the shot before and just to think and focus on what you can do in, uh, in the shot that you, you find afterwards. I think that you agree with me, no? Yes, of course. So uh, the, the thing with this, with this game, it is, uh, it is very, you need a, a big mental strength because uh, uh, sometimes you, you make some uh, you make some mistakes, of course, but uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, you will always have a chance uh, the next shot. 
to do something uh, better and uh, yeah. the open um, the same for the open I mean uh, it, it's um, it's not like with the the snooker for example uh, or some uh, other carom uh, games uh, where when you when you score some points then you will continue making points and points and points and the opponent cannot reply uh, with the field five pins game sometimes of course uh, like the beginning of the set um, you think you may think that the the game is is uh, well uh, turning to the um, to the opponent is is more uh, favorable for the opponent but you always always have to keep in mind that uh, it can change any time and the sequences can be also quite short so it can change uh, very often for you and for your opponent so yeah things are are never never ended uh, have you met how you manage the stress uh, so are you you do something because of because it, it's something that you have to learn to manage the stress when you play uh, the Yes, of course. Of course. This kind of tournament. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. So you you have to find some ways to uh, to think uh, of uh, good moments, peaceful moments. Um, yeah. If you have, uh, uh, maybe if you remember matches when you when you were able to uh, let's say uh, to control your game perfectly, then you should try to think about these sensations and try to find some uh, some confidence uh, yeah. so it um, it can really lead you to find uh, to find the peace during the game and to focus uh, on uh, on your skills on uh, on the things that you've got to play instead of focusing on uh, um, this or that shot uh, 30 minutes ago that didn't go well or uh, this or that shot of the opponent that was a bit lucky. Well, these are things that happen always. Yeah. But uh, then, what you can what you can master, what you can manage, is what happens next. So, should always focus to focus on uh, on on what comes next. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, one very interesting part of the of the game, managing all this uh, all this stress. Especially in in such matches when you're playing a, a semi final of the world championship, it's amazing. Yeah. In the meantime, there was the end of the fifth set where uh, Ciro Davide Rizzo was ending up uh, with two nice shots. Maybe with uh, Mirko Bianchi, we will be able to see the last uh, uh, shots uh, of the set. We were, in the meantime, speaking about uh, uh, stress and mental parts of the game, uh, which are very, very important, very, very important, especially when you play in tournaments uh, just like uh, this one and managing the stress can be and can do the difference between one one uh, player and the other at any level of course so you, that's what we saw also at the beginning of the match uh, when uh, when you must uh, well uh, play the first shots and uh, and try to to yeah. get into the match that's Let's it's, see what um, was happening here, uh, because it's the last part of the game, yeah. uh, uh, the previous uh, set, because uh, Rizzo was doing six points, but uh, I think that he was aiming to do not the, the, the pins uh, just like that, maybe to do one pin and to go close to the red one. That was uh, my opinion, because uh, mm -hmm. in that case, uh, Paolo had to escape from that situation and uh, it was forced not to play for the pins, of course, because otherwise his ball should, should, uh, should stay close to the, to the red one. He was playing too slow and he lost uh, the, the set. Uh, but the idea of the, uh, 
uh, of the previous shot from Rizzo is just uh, was just to do, in my opinion, to get close as much closer to the red one to do at least one pin, uh, because uh, the situation would have been the same. Then we are on the sixth sixth set and Paolo is starting 12-0. But just uh, I leave you at the uh, French comment for the, the end of the last uh, uh, set and then we will start again here with the, the new one. Ok. Euh, oui, donc là, sur la, sur la fin du, du cinquième set, on, on a vu euh, les, les derniers coups où finalement euh, Rizzo a vu son score, donc a vu son avance, essaye de faire quelques points, mais il essaye surtout de euh, laisser sa bille proche de la rouge pour que derrière Marcoline euh, non seulement ait besoin de jouer un coup en bande avant, mais en plus euh, soit obligé de jouer ce coup en bande avant en devant s'éloigner de la rouge. Donc euh, ça rend les choses euh, encore plus difficiles. Euh, ça oblige donc Marcoline à, à jouer euh, son nombre de bandes avant euh, sur l'intérieur pour euh, essayer de, de masquer dans la largeur du billard. Il le joue un tout petit peu trop court euh, et c'est ce qui provoque euh, la, la fin du cinquième set. Donc euh, encore une fois, une, une option tactique euh, très intéressante qui permet à Rizzo de, de finir le set assez sereinement et, euh, et qui empêche complètement euh, euh, Paul Marcoline de revenir ou alors pour revenir, il lui faut faire le, le coup parfait euh, à ce moment du set. C'est loin d'être facile. Oh, yeah. This end of the fifth set was, uh, was quite interesting for the, for the strategy yeah. and for the things Just uh, think about when uh, when you come close to to the 60 points. So it's uh, it's quite interesting to see that uh, one choice can uh, can uh, give you the opportunity to uh, to end the set, let's say, quite easily, because you you force the opponent to play uh, the perfect shot, and uh, of course for the opponent uh, then it's very difficult to play the perfect shot uh, uh, under pressure. At the end of a set. Yeah, absolutely. Also, if you are able to see and to understand that maybe your opponent is under pressure, giving a lot of pressure more can uh, swap the game into uh, into your side. Um, yeah, exactly. It is a, another very interesting part of the of the game. I'm trying to always to. Uh, Well, to, to try to put more and more difficulties for the for the opponent to see if he can uh, hold the pressure or if you can maybe win uh, without making exceptional shots yourself, but uh, just by uh, uh, receiving points from the opponent or receiving very easy solution from the opponent because he is not able to um, well to manage the pressure that you're putting. So, yeah, because sometimes we are we are hurting ourselves, and uh, uh, by even bad thoughts, and uh, it's uh, something that maybe is not really related to our opponent. But if our opponent is very skilled to understand uh, that we are uh, uh, under pressure, be sure that he will be give uh, to us uh, as much pressure as he can as, as he can give in any case. Uh, and that's it. So, Juan Carlos Montes de Oca from Uruguay. That's the guy that we see here. Very, very funny and nice guy. Yes. It's another, it's another very nice part of the five pins game is that uh, uh, all these players that we meet in the international tournaments are uh, very friendly always and, uh, and very happy to meet each, meet, uh, each other. I think that uh, uh, lots of us can say that, uh, that uh, we've got some, uh, some friends now. So even if on the table we are not friends mm -hmm. anymore, uh, then uh, <laughs> when uh, the match uh, is finished, uh, yeah, we've got uh, very good relations also. Uh, with uh, with Italian players, with uh, German players, uh, or also from uh, South America. So, 
this is really something that uh, um, that was that I appreciate uh, uh, a lot uh, when I go playing for European Championships or World Championships. This is uh, the, say what happens on side on the side. Yeah, and uh, in the previous shot, uh, you 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 can have another tip when you have uh, this. Uh, the opponent's ball and they are in the mid part of the table and the opponent ball is quite close to the short rake you won't play to cushion you won't play one cushion to recover and to get back quite from the on the same position uh, for from for your opponent it's, it's not easy you have to understand the lines of the shot and maybe study also the speed but it's just the way you have to play and you have to learn how to recover from that shot so won't you don't don't play quite often two cushion because there isn't enough space to get inside you play one cushion so the opponent ball is, is staying close to the short rail and the other and your ball is going from long rail and close to the short opposite rail hmm. ouais, donc il euh, y, y a des choix différents hein, qui peuvent être exécutés sur les euh, sur les coups notamment quand on a des deux bandes avant à jouer avec euh, une bille très proche de la bande une bille de l'adversaire très proche de la bande ça peut être intéressant de jouer seulement une seule bande avant, histoire de ne pas prendre le risque de, de donner des points ou de, de prendre la, la petite quantité de billes qu'on qu ne voulait pas. Donc autant aller directement sur le, sur le une bande. Alors il faut travailler un peu hein, pour trouver la bonne mesure, mais <coughs> c'est des points qu'il faut, hein, faut avoir dans les deux. And uh, you have to consider that uh, Paolo Marcolin was shooting uh, on the long rail for two or three times. And uh, it means that there is no chance to, to do pins and you always have to recover. It's uh, quite a frustration when you play so much on uh, one cushion on the long rail. It's really something uh, frustrating, especially when you play in five pins. So normally it may happen in nine pins, but in five pins, if you play always one cash on, it's crazy, crazy situation. Yeah, yeah. Là, on a vu des séquences où Marco Lin était obligé beaucoup, beaucoup de jouer des une bande avant, qui sont probablement les coups les les plus difficiles et les plus frustrants au cinq pins, parce que Uh, ils permettent uh, rarement de, de faire des points. Uh, C'est difficile de, de se défendre. Uh, ça, ça montre aussi là que le match uh, tourne un peu en faveur de, de Reed. So. And once again, here, so Rizzo was able to play the Traversino, but also with the defense. So uh, one more time, so the points, he scores points and he, he ensures the defense. So it was situation. a deadly sequence. Yes. Ouais, donc là, on, on, fait, on est vraiment sur une, sur une grosse séquence de la part de Rizzo qui enchaîne les points. On a maintenant 20 points d'avance euh, sur, sur Marcoline. Uh, et arrive à chaque fois à faire des points et la défense uh, ou à minima la défense et laisse uh, Marcoline dans des situations uh, à chaque fois assez périlleuses même si là il fait un magnifique devant d'avant il fait maxi 10 points avec uh, juste la, la qui mmh. rouge super but this is coming up from the the, the, the Garufa which was taken always in the opposite way. So the chance has been given. If you take uh, on, on that side the Garufa, then you are... Uh, mm. Then it's possible that your opponent is doing a two cushion just like uh, Paolo did. Now he has to go for a two cushion or a three cushion. Maybe a two cushion because if he takes the ball on the right part, he can go to play for the red ball mm. too. But the idea exactly is to go uh, close to the short rail opposite. That's the, the the right way to to do the shot is that one. If you do the pins or uh, you slide a little bit, you can also do four points with the red ball. But this is 
the perfection, quite the perfection. Et sur, le, sur le coup précédent que vient juste de jouer à Rizzo, on a vu la, la façon parfaite hein, de jouer le coup. Euh, on avait un deux bandes à jouer euh, avec éventuellement euh, la possibilité d'envoyer la bille adversaire dans l'équipe ou la possibilité d'envoyer euh, sa bille sur la, la bille rouge. Mais le plus important, c'était vraiment d'envoyer la bille de l'adversaire euh, dans le coin, donc euh, la bille blanche dans le coin en haut à gauche sur cette image. Et c'est exactement ce qu'a fait Rizzo. Donc le, le point le plus important sur le coup précédent, c'était... Euh, c'était vraiment la force qui permet de, de mettre en difficulté la position. And uh, this is absolutely luck. Uh, very, very big mismatch, but it's absolutely luck. And uh, it may be something that is killing uh, the set over there. Because uh, one centimeter from one side or one centimeter from the other, Paolo would have the chance to play 29 to 35 and maybe to get back from the set. This yeah. is the only point, uh, unpredictable, of course, that can uh, kill the match. And also maybe it's uh, not easy to recover also in, in part of, in, in, the, in the mental part too. Yeah. Ouais, là, on a un, un coup euh, qui vient d'être joué par euh, Rizzo, euh, qui était un coup euh, loupé. Hein, on ne sait pas s'il voulait faire 5 euh, bandes ou, ou 7 bandes. Euh, il finit euh, juste, euh, juste dans le coin, ce qui lui permet d'aller dans, le, dans les quilles, mais euh, bon, c'était absolument pas voulu. Et à ce moment-là, du 7, c'est assez, assez mortel, hein, puisque... Un centimètre à droite ou un centimètre à gauche, on était à 29,35 avec la possibilité pour Marco et de remonter. Et là, on se retrouve à 29,41 avec une défense. C'est plus du tout euh, la même partie, finalement. Yeah. And here we see that, uh, yeah, it, uh, so Rizzo is, uh, is still uh, pretty deadly on the, on the attacks. So when he, when he, when he has this uh, piloto, so he, he makes eight, eight, ten. Pretty, yeah, yeah pretty absolutely. But uh, since the match was uh, uh, on the same level and they were playing the same uh, billiard, uh, it was quite okay. Then uh, The first one we did a mismatch and was able to let the other the other player start and uh, and start uh, the engine within uh, a different uh, a different speed. He started, so it was was happening to Rizzo, and uh, the quality of some shots of Rizzo are absolutely amazing. No, I don't know. On a vu quelques, ah oui. quelques coups de Rizzo hein, qui étaient absolument incroyables. Euh, la fin du quatrième set, notamment, avec euh, un Giro, euh, c'est formidable. Et puis euh, là, quelques coups d'attaque, euh, encore une fois, hein, de grande qualité, avec à la fois 8 points ou 10 points et la défense. Donc, ça, c'est vraiment les coups qui, font, qui permettent de faire le break dans un set de 5 qui And he's trying also to find uh, solutions with the with the red ball maybe to to try to find some uh, some very hard defense but very very easy very very hard to to obtain at this moment of the uh, match 6 to 57 It's, also uh, here, it did the possibility. He had now Paolo has the possibility to recover with the good shot and maybe to find a way uh, to have a chance. So and we see here the, the disappointment yeah. of the of the player of Paolo who sees that even if there is a defense, well. He wanted uh, 10 or 12 points, not only two points. Yeah. 
the fact that uh, that he expresses the, the feelings, I think he, it also can make uh, Rizzo confident a bit, uh, a bit stronger, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have been a different, uh, different match because uh, it, if if it was going for ten points, it was different. It was going to forty six, and then that shot was completely different because a mismatch could have been taken into a traversino, and it could. Uh, it could have been a diff different match. Now Paolo went for uh, a trick action. Maybe he took uh, a too fast decision. And uh, I think we are at the, the end of the match. Uh, and Rizzo is closing and going into the, the first one that will play the World Championship with uh, Ciro Davide Rizzo. And uh, it was a very, very nice match. Uh, two nice players. You can see that uh, it's a friendly match in terms of uh, what was happening at the end. I can add one thing. They were eating together the evening before. I was with them. And so it was quite funny to have at the same table people that was playing afterwards uh, to play a World Championship. And uh, it was uh, uh, the, the billiard that I really like. So. Uh, I will tell you also what was the diet uh, of uh, Giro Davide Rizzo between uh, that game and the final one because I was play I was eating in the same place. I don't uh, it's, it's something really strange I will I will tell you but it's uh, I will tell you in the final that uh, I was quite okay. astonished but I hope that you like it. I just want you uh, to do some comment in French uh, to all the the French guys uh, that uh, were uh, uh, giving a look at this uh, at this match with the double comments in two languages. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope to see you playing soon, maybe in uh, team tournaments and also uh, single tournaments. Uh, we have to get back to our fantastic game. So I leave you at your last comment and then I will do my final one after you. Ok, merci Lucas. Oui, bon, bah, on, a, on a vu un, un très beau match euh, avec euh, énormément de choses à dire, euh, notamment sur euh, euh, les, les petites options tactiques, euh, les petits événements euh, plus ou moins chanceux qui peuvent faire euh, tourner un set ou l'autre. Euh, euh, cet aspect mental euh, est vraiment très important dans le jeu. Euh, voilà, surtout. Euh, N'hésitez pas à, à poser des questions dans les commentaires. N'hésitez pas à, à, à venir, à vous intéresser euh, au Sanky et, et, et à sa disposition pour tous les francophones euh, ou les anglophones. Et, euh, et voilà. Venez, venez, venez parler du euh, Sanky. And uh, thanks a lot, Lucas. So, uh, yeah, I was uh, encouraging the, the French guys to uh post some comments and uh some uh, some questions so of course uh, I'll, I'll be there to, to try to to answer them and uh and if i don't succeed then uh, i will ask you also i, I will look at some help maybe <laughs> i'm here to help absolutely absolutely perfect. <laughs> yeah perfect and uh i know that you have taken advantage also from another italian guy uh thomas primon who did a camp with you uh and uh, I think it's something very good to have uh, young and talented uh, and skilled people to come up uh, across the Europe to uh, develop and, uh, and to share the knowledge of this uh, amazing game. And so yeah. next appointment uh, will be always uh, next Wednesday with five wins for dummies again. We will do the second semi-final of the World Championship between Paolo Spadaro and Santi Caratozzolo and the comments. I don't know whether in French or in, uh, in his uh, Belgian language, it will be Peter yeah. Debaes that uh, yeah. I would did some comment with me in the last years in Nikast at uh, the Danish tournament. And uh, we will see together the match and do the same just like today. I thank again uh, the Italian Federation, the CIB and the UMB, uh, also the French Federation, you, 
uh, all your players, also Alberto Casale, that is always very kind with me. And uh, I hope to see you soon. And thank you also to Mirko Bianchi, our fantastic uh, director, that is always yes. able to run up uh, uh, within uh, our request of replays and uh, whatever. Thank you, Mirko. Your, your help is always appreciated. And thank you to all the people that uh, was following us since today. Bye bye and see you next Wednesday. And uh, in my opinion, take a look at that guy because you will see playing again with the very talented players very well and defeat Italian players. Don't forget this long bird. I, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. And thanks a lot to, to all the federations and for this great, uh, this great idea. Thanks a lot. Thank you.